and welcome to Adventures in Small Business. This is a collaborative effort by the U.S. Small Business Administration, Hawaii, Small Business Development Center, the Patsy Mink Center for Business and Leadership, and the Veteran Outreach Center for, of the Pacific. We showcase stories of local small businesses. My name is Sandra Cancinos, and I'm with the SBA Hawaii District Office. Today we have Valerie Lam, Business Development Coordinator, and Hao Gwen, Deputy Director of Operations of Pacific Gateway Center. Welcome to the show. So recently I took a tour of your facilities. Um, just amazing work that you guys are doing there. So many small businesses uh, go in there and cook and work and just the, the amount of, of love that is put into that facility is, is really amazing. So I just want to let you have the opportunity to talk about, you know, introduction of the Pacific Gateway Center. Yeah, so the facility that you saw was our Kalihi Commercial Kitchen, and that's just one of the programs that we have when it comes to um, supporting small businesses. Pacific Gateway Center is a nonprofit organization that came about in 1973 by three churches, um, St. Elizabeth's, Aldergate, and Kalma Kapali. Um, and it was in response to an influx of immigrants from Vietnam and Southeast Asia um, during that time, because at that time there was a lot of, there was civil war and a lot of civil strife there. Um, in 1984, we became an official 501c3, and we were the Kalihi Palama Immigration Service Center. And then in 1999, we actually were dubbed the Pacific Gateway Center. Um, so we started serving immigrants and refugees, um, asylum seekers, victims of human trafficking. And kind of the reason why I started talking about how the evolution of our um, organization's name has changed, it also speaks to the evolution of our services. Mm -hmm. It really is about the needs of our clients. And so, like I said, we started with Im immigrants, refugees, asylum seekers, um, victims of human trafficking. And that still is very much a part of our direct servicing clients. Um, but what we've seen is that a lot of these, in these a lot of the people in these communities are coming from low income situations. Mm -hmm. And so as far as um, our, our, the needs that have been um, demanded of us, we're realizing that we also have to help people in vulnerable situations, such as those in low-income populations. Um, the tenets of our organization are to survive and thrive. And so our programs and services on survival deal with providing direct social services, mm -hmm. like food, shelter, clothing, uh, for our immigrant population, language access. Um, but the thrive element, and that's our main mission and goal for all of our clients, is to empower them to self-sufficiency. And so that's where the economic development and the helping in terms of entrepreneurship comes about. So can you elaborate a little bit on the entrepreneurship uh, segment of, of your organization? How is it that you know, someone can come in and uh, ask for help, and how did they get into the programs? What different type of programs do you have to be uh, self-sufficient in, in your organization? Absolutely. So in terms of economic advancement, we do job placement, job creation, job training and education. We provide ESL classes. Um, and we're working in terms of like longevity and quality of life for people, for social and economic integration, especially for our immigrant populations. Um, but as far as our, our specific programs for entrepreneurship are concerned, we have the Culinary Business Incubator, which we call CBI. Um, that's the commercial kitchen in Kalihi. Um, it serves about 130 entrepreneurs, well, we serve generally 130 entrepreneurs. Um, on a daily basis, monthly, or yearly, or it's our is that our annual or is that our monthly? Um, is 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 that monthly? Monthly. Yeah. Okay. So, oh, okay. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot. Right. Um, and so that that's just one element is CBI, which is the commercial kitchen. So for those who are interested in creating a food startup, like a food truck or a catering business, mm -hmm. or if you're looking at trying to create a business that does value added food processing bottling, cookies, baked goods, things like that, um, and you don't have access to the equipment or you don't have access to the commercial kitchen space, that's what we're, we're there to help you with. Okay. Um, additionally, we have farmer entrepreneurs. Um, this started because a lot of our immigrant clients were originally farmers from the original country that they came from. Mm -hmm. And so when they came here, we helped facilitate finding land. Uh, we helped facilitate training in terms of food safety and um, other regulatory requirements that come with being a farmer here in the United States. Um, and then we also have our Paradise Enterprise Incubator. So I've already talked about our CBI, which is our kitchen. Um, our farm incubator, and then our Paradise Enterprise uh, Incubator, which is more the business side of things. Yes. So if entrepreneurs are looking to understand how to test markets mm -hmm. or how to do marketing in general, 
or looking to develop a business plan from that very basic beginning, um, Paradise Enterprise Incubator is there for them for that. So as a deputy director, um, how is it that someone, say I w I'm interested in, in participating in one or all of your programs, how does one go about getting into the program? We just have to find the match, right? We, we want to know about the need of our clients. So um, in particularly in the business, for example, um, or for example, of the um, culinary business incubator, mm -hmm. and they said they wanted to start up um, a food. Mm -hmm. um, food truck, yeah. um, but then we gotta have some like go through the process of intake, sit down, talk with them about it. Um, we see the people, are they mm -hmm. ready? What type of experience they have? Mm -hmm. How much do they know about their own the business? Do, they have do you guide business them idea? through that? Do you tell them, you know, this is X, Y, and Z. This is what you need. This is what you need to have. This is where you can get what you need. Yes. People came in working with different background experience. Somebody mm -hmm. already have the business idea or already is ready to go. Mm -hmm. They only need the, the facility and the space. Okay. Um, and, and, but somebody just came in with the idea, uh, I really want to do this, and where should I start? Then we just go through the process and evaluate um, the experience and background, and then we can, if we have expertise in how we're going to provide, if not, we refer to our collaborator. Like um, small business administration, Hawaii yes. small business development. Center. Oh, okay, and then so you said you have multiple locations. Yeah, so um, our main offices is in Kalihi at the commercial mm -hmm. kitchen. Um, we also have the farm in Kunia, um, and then most recently, one of our newer projects is actually the Nakapuna Makamai Community Center, mm -hmm. which is directed towards Kapuna, their families, and the community at large. Okay. Um, that space actually doesn't just serve as a community center and a gathering space but it's also um, a platform for any of our entrepreneurs to do sales. We do a twice monthly farmer's market there, um, and our immigrant farmers actually sell some of their produce there, and some of our kapuna who are looking for a third act as entrepreneurs actually sell crafts and other goods there as well. Awesome. And so most recently, <laughs> which is not a location, I, mm -hmm. I, but most recently we um, have been granted some federal funding for Pacific Gateway Center Social Enterprise Program, which is PGC SEP. Yes. So tell me a little bit more about that program because I know you guys are wanting to. Yeah, really I'm going to let Dr. Howe yeah, take it. Oh, yeah. yeah. It is um, our latest mm -hmm. initiative. So, in the job creation, mm -hmm. um, business development, and economic development for our clients mm -hmm. and, um, you know, for Hawaii. Yeah, I love Hawaii. So, um, the program itself, um, the reason um, we came up with the idea and uh, launched the program because of the traditional form of business, um, you know, is a, the, the ultimate goal is to say, mm -hmm. and for the revenue, uh, how much money you're going to generate and how much profit you're going to gain. But um, the element of social enterprises emphasize on the um, the social element, the responsibility that how the company, in addition to um, the profit they try to maximize, mm -hmm. is a responsibility and uh, give back to the community what they can uh, in, in various forms, either through the uh, generate or create job for people living in the, you know, on the poverty level or low income, or um, give back partial of the profit um, to the community. Okay. Yeah. And so um, this program, how long, or is it like a length of time that the program, somebody can join for the program? We, it, it's a five years program. Okay. It's a five year program. We are very fortunate to be part of the initiative of mm -hmm. the government. And we are one of the six um, organizations. Agency, yeah. agency yeah. and organization that are already receiving the funding oh, okay. uh, to help the uh, Small business in Hawaii, so both in the for profit or non profit, okay. um, either startup or looking for expansion. So, yeah. are you for this program? Is there a specific industry that uh, an entrepreneur needs to be to be into the program? No, they okay. don't have to be. I'll, the main criteria to qualify to be a participant is you can be a non profit or a for profit organization, and that you have a business idea. So, whether it's a startup business idea or you're just or you have this business already and you're looking for expansion. You're qualified. And when you say expansion, are you talking about having the program fund for a location or, um, you know, uh, an extra truck? 
Right. Uh, okay. That's actually exactly that's, yeah, what it is. tangible. You're looking for tangible examples, right? And so the social the social portion of it all is it just by giving back? It's is this a, um, are you guys associated with uh, specific organizations, or is it just anybody that they feel the entrepreneur feels that they want to give back to? Is it their community, mm -hmm. the community in general, all the islands? So I think one of the interesting things about Hawaii in business mm -hmm. is that the value of community building is integral to yes. being a business in Hawaii. And when you're a social enterprise, you're tapping into that value. Mm -hmm. So whether you're a nonprofit organization that in the past has basically done garage sales out of the back of the executive director or the president's you know, backyard, yeah. and now you want to actually create a brick and mortar store, um, and the intention is to help with fundraising for your nonprofit organization, or your catering business, and it's important that you highlight your ethnic culture. Um, and so there's a value there that you're trying to give back, whether it's um, as a nonprofit organization or a for-profit organization, that's what we're looking for, is that you have more than just a single bottom line. It's not just about your profits, but it's about community engagement and community building as well for your business. So what are some of the unique problems and, and challenges that you face uh, as you know, um, rolling out this program? The running out of the programs, um, it's, it's, it's just very important to reach out to the, um, the business community, right, to the, to the agency, to the nonprofit agencies that mm -hmm. want to develop a social venture or expanding their social ventures. Or the for profit that um, they want to launch their business or expand the business mm -hmm. um, to understand about that social responsibility and the meaning behind it to mm -hmm. create jobs the local people here in Hawaii, the full-time job and full benefit. So they can be, um, they can have a better life, they increase the household incomes, yeah. and they themselves and other members in the family have a better uh, well-being, you know, either we invest into health care and or education. So, so for those potential participants that mm -hmm. are coming from low-income backgrounds or um, different cultures in different countries, um, challenges for them that are unique to them include like just being able to speak the language and um, access. If you're low income, oftentimes access to capital, access to whether that capital is monetary, mm -hmm. equipment, or facilities. Um, for those who are of immigrant backgrounds, um, like I said, language issues, navigating the regulation and navigating the bureaucracy of mm -hmm. establishing a business. So luckily, in our situation as a nonprofit and with our legacy, we have the ability to provide wraparound services for folks who are coming from those backgrounds. Um, so whether it's direct social services that help you get transportation so that you can make it to a meeting, or um, childcare, we are working with partners and we ourselves have those services to provide. Awesome, awesome. Well, we, in, in, in the same time, right, it's not to address the issue of the employee, right? If you are the business owner mm -hmm. and you have employee, but sometimes you don't know the issue that employee facing in life, right, or the daily life. Mm -hmm. And so we offer such a service, as mentioned by Val, um, so the employer can retain the employee. I see. Right? Okay. So the, and the employee yeah. can continue, continue the work, work. Yeah. while their own problem, you know, of family issue mm -hmm. can be addressed. Okay. So that's why what she mean by wrap around services. Got it. Well, but in addition to that, then uh, she mentioned about that the um, particular uh, newly immigrant and come here and have so many um, difficulties and challenges. Mm -hmm. Even the local one, they have right, any normal business matter that they do not have a strong business background, background yeah. or experience mm -hmm. or lack of capital. Yeah. So our program offers a very low interest micro loan. Okay. So hopefully that one is a, we, we try to provide a full set so, menu yeah. of services. From, and from services. capital to business Busy training, to, technical assistance to social services. Okay, awesome. Uh, we'll be right back with Adventures uh, in Small Business. Hello, I'm Mufi Hanneman. I want to tell you about a great show that appears on Think Tech Hawaii. It's all about tourism. In fact, we call it Tourism 101, where we talk about the issues and challenges that faces our number one industry throughout the state. We'll have some interesting guests, some very informative dialogue, and allow you an opportunity to maybe learn a little bit more about why this industry is so important for our state. It's been great for us in the past. We need it today, and especially going forward. That's Tourism 101 on Think Tech Hawaii. Mahalo. Aloha. I'm Keisha King, host of At the Crossroads, where we have conversations that are real 
and relevant. We have spoken with community leaders from right here locally in Hawaii and all around the world. Won't you join us on thinktechhawaii.com or on YouTube on the Think Tech Hawaii channel. Our conversations are real, relevant, and lots of fun. I'll see you at the crossroads. Aloha. And thank you for coming back to Adventures in Small Business. So Val and, and, and how, um, just wondering with uh, Pacific Gateway Center, what are, who are some of your partners and how do you make this you know, uh, work with other organizations, agencies around here in Hawaii? We, um, so our organization has been um, in Hawaii for over 40 years and we are very fortunate has established great collaboration with many agencies, you know, at the federal level, government and private sector and other nonprofits. Um, in the area of business development, job creation, and economic advancement, uh, we received a lot of support um, from Small Business Administration. Yes. We now co collaborate with them. Okay. Uh, Hawaii Small Business Development Center, including Passimings um, Business and Leadership, mm -hmm. Center for business, business and Leadership. And um, we have the University of Hawaii Pacific Business Center program okay. and the Honolulu, Honolulu Minority Business Development Agency at UA as well. Okay. Um, so those um, collaborators have been working with us over the year to support all the many small business that you, as uh, I mentioned earlier, like over 130 uh, per month that we have to work with. Um, so that is in area of business um, services. Mm -hmm. So for those of clients that come to us and need access to the capital, um, in particular program now, we are the, have the PGC SEP program, mm -hmm. so for enterprise program, um, we have established a collaboration with the uh, Hawaii Community Reinvestment Corporation, mm -hmm. uh, the local initiative support corporation, and um, DBED, Department oh. of Economic Business and um, Development, Development uh, and Tourism. Yes. So um, social enterprise program, how would one enroll into the program if someone was you know, interested in joining? So if folks are interested in being part of PGC SEP, all they do have to do is reach out to us. Okay. Um, we can be reached at 808-851-7010. That's 808-851-7010. Or you can email us at info at pacificgatewaycenter.org. Awesome. Um, Dr. Hao Nguyen is the program manager, and then also um, Skylar Smella is also a um, program coordinator with us. Okay, and so um, as you mentioned, you, you work with a, a, lot, a lot of agencies around uh, the state of Hawaii. Right. So what makes um, Pacific Gateway Center's SEP program different from other agencies and other, other organizations? Well, um, as uh, we said earlier, right, so we help our, our um, target population is not just only uh, low-income people mm -hmm. and all the, uh, the people, um, uh, in the local people. Then including the uh, newly arrival immigrants, mm -hmm. um, and and those those one who came in with um, so many challenges, mm -hmm. um, need need help from us, and we provide not just only as earlier we mentioned the business services, but then other other sorts of services that to help both the uh, business business owner, and the employee, and the ultimate goal is just a uh, help them to earn an employment, uh, generate job. So. Okay. I think what makes Pacific Gateway Center's program, the PGC SEP program, unique is because we're not only just providing the business services, like Dr. Howe said, but we're also trying to deal with the real-to-life challenges that make it difficult for small businesses to start up or to expand. Okay. And I had another question. If somebody had, doesn't have access to, say, the internet or maybe a phone mm -hmm. and they're on different yeah. islands. Yeah. How would one go about trying to contact you? Or okay. From a different island? From a different island. Mm. The deep, different island. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. Without a phone without, a without phone? the yeah. internet. Yeah. <laughs> but is there any offices around in any of the islands? We that's unfortunately. The locations? Unfortunately, our main offices are here, here. Yeah. Oh, wow. on Oahu. Okay. Oh, wow. yeah. Got it. Okay, no problem. Yeah. So 
It will have to be a phone call or an email at some point. <laughs> and so, um, so besides contacting you through phone and email, is there any events that uh, Pacific Gateway Center holds for people to come in and you know just get a brief workshop or introduction Certainly. Of, of all the programs? So unrelated specifically to PGC SEP, mm -hmm. we actually, like I said, have a farmer's market in Kaka'ako okay. at Nakapuna Makamai. It's on the corner of Keawe and Alamoana Boulevard. Um, our next farmer's market where there'll be staffing there that, and there'll be folks there that can talk about some of our social enterprise programs um, will be December the 13th. Okay. And so um, just bringing it back uh, to uh, SBA. So I know that SBA has worked along with uh, Pacific Gateway right. Center in the past. Right. And um, just can you elaborate a little bit on how we collaborated together? And well, I have a um, you know, direct experience mm -hmm. with uh, Mary. Dale, yes. Miss Mary Dale. Um, so like, it's like um, when she, this is so helpful in terms of like putting different resources mm -hmm. and uh, she's a great coordinator with a different uh, state agency to bring in a workshop um, for our um, clients, mm -hmm. so, you know. So one of them is just like we go through, so again, that we go through um, our client and, and, and document the need. Yeah. And based on that, we work with um, SBI and Mary in particular and, and, and create a series of workshop for um, our client from the startup, uh, marketing, how to register for a business and how to um, take care of financial management and business management. So she brought in the expert from the Department of Taxation, we are talking about loan and um, um, you know, insurance. So cover a variety of topics, but, but cater to the need of our client. So it's very, very helpful. And um, Were these workshops uh, have a fee to attend? A, a no, fee? no, no, it's, a, it's open, right? So we are non-profit. Okay. Everybody come, came to us and we support. Okay. Um, and it is a, in, even Mary and bring in all the experts, they all free. Okay. And, and are there any events coming up maybe in the next month or so? With related to PGC yes. SEP, um, right now the way that we're handling intake is uh, it's we want to gather interest, and so if there's anyone who is interested, give us a call, get in touch, and either Dr. Howe or Skylar will um, do intake with you and do an assessment, and then from there, once we have a good critical mass, I guess you could yeah. say, uh, we'll actually start scheduling and figuring out um, the program, the training. Okay, and so. Um, what would be your biggest, the biggest takeaway that you want people to know about Pacific Gateway? Well, it is um, you, 40 year nonprofit yeah. um, to our mission. We've got to go back to our mission yeah. to help the, uh, to assist the low income immigrant um, refugees, uh -huh. survival of victim human trafficking, mm -hmm. and other vulnerable groups in Hawaii. Um, so, so, and through the education and training. Mm -hmm. Um, skill building so that they can um, survive and try and to gain their self sufficiency. We will empower them and at the same time to help them um, pertain, pertain the their culture so they can soon integrate into the American society and but on their own feet. Okay. And so out of curiosity, is there any of the any of the small businesses that use your facilities in uh, Kihei? I mean uh, Kalihi. Kalihi. Uh -huh. um, known outside, you know, any food trucks and yeah. industries that they post? Yeah, it? so um, I think I sent you some photos. Um, yes. Some of the business that, that people do recognize, 808 Express Kitchen. Okay. Um, it's a local family-run business. Um, Gary Talbert and his family do catering for local Hawaiian foods. Awesome. Um, Auntie Nani's Hawaiian, um, cook uh, Auntie Nani's Hawaiian Cookies. She's actually Kapuna. She's in her third act. Okay. Um, and so she's baking, and basically, it's really, it's actually really interesting. She's a good case study. Um, she has always been at festivals and pop ups, mm -hmm. and she wants to expand and start working on e commerce. So she just had her first Instagram okay. account that she just opened. <laughs> um, let's see. We also uh, uh, the pig and the lady actually is an was an incubation um, business that okay. um, wow. okay. was in our building in Chinatown. Yeah. Oh, that's great! Yeah. Amazing. So they're, they're uh, known. And they're in expansion yeah. at this point. Yeah. Okay, got it. <laughs> All right. So thank you so much for coming in, and I appreciate your time.
And um, um, if you want to reiterate where the people can contact you through or email you, that would be great. Yeah, so we're at Pacific Gateway Center. Our location is 723C Umi Street mm -hmm. here in Honolulu. Um, and we can be reached at 808-851-7010 okay. or info at PacificGatewayCenter.org. All right, thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in to Adventures in Small Business. Thank you for See you next us. time.